Four years ago, men's college golf introduced the 500 rule. A team's winning percentage must be 500 or better to be eligible for the NCAA postseason. In its maiden year, four teams fell victim to the new guideline, Arizona, Vanderbilt, Northwestern, and Minnesota. The 500 rule gives all teams uh, uh, the opportunity to somehow make it to the NCAA uh, regionals uh, if, if they're not successful as far as uh, winning their, their conference championship. This year, we are likely to see at least one team finish below 500, which would have been a team to make an at-large bid in the postseason. The way things used to be, you almost kind of had to keep playing a circle, certain circle of uh, teams to kind of keep your ranking up there. But now that it's opened it up, it gives you a chance to say we're going to play some of the top quality competition from across the country. Uh, it gives us a chance to see some of the top talent out there and kind of know what are the things we need to work on. Despite the positives the 500 rule has had on smaller programs, some coaches feel there's still a few flaws to work out. If you make a schedule, you should be able to stick to it and you know, be turned in at the end of the year, first of the year, because you know it affects people when you when you don't play. You know, from a financial standpoint. But besides that, that if you know you turn your schedule in, set it, and then go from there. I think it's made some people think. Um, I think with the decision that Trey made to pull out of the tournament, I believe in Jacksonville, I believe, um, and go play at South Florida's event. Ultimately, it was a great decision for him because the team went and played well at, at South Florida, finished second, piled up a lot of wins. Um, not that they aren't capable of doing that at Jacksonville, but the point is, is he made a decision in the best interest of his program. For all the programs that were looking for more exposure to play against better teams and stronger tournaments, the rule has done just that. I think the 500 rule has is, is kind of uh, allowed some, some more competition as far as you know teams are playing different schedules. So you see a lot more teams throughout the year. I know that's something we try to do. We try to see as you know as many teams as we can. Uh, you know I think it's, 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 it's helped college golf in a lot of regards. We've definitely gotten to several tournaments that we wouldn't get into otherwise. Um, it's been nice. It's kind of opened up the field for some of the smaller teams. And you know if we play well in some of these tournaments, then it's going to definitely help us in the rankings. It looks like teams will have to continue to figure out a way to stay above 500 if they want to be eligible for the postseason because this rule appears to be here for a while longer. For more on the 500 rule, check out Ron Balicki and Lance Ringler's stories on GolfWeek.com.